previously on Uncharted Expedition. This team, in my opinion, is one of the best teams you could ever have to go exploring and to go look for things. Apparently I've only been out here about an hour and it seemed like a lot longer. Looks like this might have caved in. Setting everything up and it, you know, sorry, caved in. Yeah. <laughs> my name is Timothy Draper. I'm the producer and director of Uncharted Expedition. Everything you're about to see is unscripted and filmed by our crew. The sites we investigate are linked to lost history and treasure. These legends have been passed down for generations. Some of the footage you're about to watch may be considered dangerous. Our team members choose to put themselves into situations that may result in serious consequences. We ask that you use caution if you choose to follow our breadcrumbs. Hi, I'm Gypsy Jules. I'm from Texas. I'm a metal detectorist, treasure hunter. I travel all over and uh, do metal detecting, treasure hunting of all sorts. I just got to St. George and uh, beautiful scenery here. Lots of beautiful mountains. I have been to Utah before, but not this particular area of Utah. Uh, looks like an amazing place to explore and uh, discover the history, the local history of the area. All right, so I'm super excited to go out and uh, treasure hunt with the guys this weekend. Uh, just wanted to go over some of my gear. So I like nine millimeter uh, static rope for any kind of descents that I do. Anything too thick and bulky just feels like it bogs down some of my, you know, my gear and whatnot. Just getting ready to go out on another adventure. All charged, cleaned, ready to go. Got some jerky, because you know, don't want Tim to get hangry or chewed, one of us. Whole team's going out, we're gonna be doing some more treasure hunting. These metal detectors here, Garrett metal detectors, you know, the walkie talkies need to be charged. I got the drill over here in that case. I definitely gotta make sure that I'm geared up with my mag light. Um, I've got my cams uh, set up for an anchoring point. Um, I've got plenty of webbing, machete, you know, for Todd in case we need to go fight off a blow snake. This is just a small example of what it's like. And this is just my personal gear. You can imagine having all the guides that we do and all the kind of gear that we take with us. It's pretty crazy. I always bring my nine with me, you know, might have to save sean you know he might be scared of a squirrel oh backed up ready to go here we go boys my friends from uncharted expedition have called me in for a little help um i'm hoping that i can add something to the uh, team's work i uh, am a field representative for garrett metal detectors i have my own youtube channel uh, that I've had for about five and a half years now. I've heard bits and pieces about kind of what we're looking for and the history, but I'm eager to learn more. From what I understand, we're gonna be looking for a lost cave. It's gonna be a really fun adventure. I'm really looking forward to this. What you gonna do? We're out here trying to find that cave and you know I'm, I'm really excited because this is going to be an opportunity where we could you know test out one of our new sponsors uh-huh and mag light I mean this has just always been something that I've always had mag lights you know they're just a good good brand you know real durable I like I'm ready for this one <laughs> <laughs> okay hold Todd's on. not compensating I'm, I'm, I'm fine with mine <laughs> holy crap is that a flashlight or is that a billy club well whatever you need it to be that's what's so cool about them <laughs> you could use that as a hammer what we're here doing here today is we're actually trying to find an example of a, a natural blowhole that we're looking for um, for those that are not you know familiar with southern utah southern utah used to be a huge hotbed of volcanic activity yeah i mean you can see we got this uh we got this natural vent here there's a massive uh dameron valley cinder cone right behind us 
Um, there actually used to be a super volcano that scientists are now just discovering erupted about 30 million years ago that is just north of us right here. So it was really, really close. So Todd, how did like these little vents form? Well, they, uh, as, as the magma cools uh -huh. and goes down, it, it uh, makes, a str makes a tunnel going down. And then also you've got uh, gases venting up and, and as they come up, they open up uh, passages. So that all that gas and pressure has got to go it's somewhere, go right? Somewhere. Well, but, uh, this yeah. is really cool. So yeah. hey, why don't you get that uh, that billy club out in case we run into any <laughs> critters? If we were even just another 20 feet that way, we would have never saw this cave. So we need to we need to remember that as we're. Hey, you got a big one. Oh, I'm gonna, you guys aren't going to like gang up on me down there. You, know, we'll you better watch to. your step. So like you're saying, you got to make sure that you keep your eyes peeled yeah. because we could have easily walked over this. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Check out the roots that are popping out right there. That's kind of cool. You know, Sean, I think uh, that was a great example. Oh, yeah. It really was. I feel like we're going to get more into explaining the story, but this is pretty much what I was told, what they found. It was just a bigger cave. When they walked in, it was just full of artifacts and wow. stuff like that. Hey, Gypsy. Hey, Gypsy. How's it going? Hey. Going great. How are y'all? Good, doing good, good, good. Doing good. We just uh, crawled out of a lava cave. It was kind of cool. Very cool. We're going to be heading your way. That's why we're calling you. Just letting you know that we're going to hop back in the cars. We're going to be heading your way to the Airbnb. And uh, we're going to go out and do some treasure hunting for the rest of the day. How does that sound? Incredible. I'm so excited. This is going to be a <laughs> great adventure. Say expect us in probably about 15 minutes or so. Okay. Look forward to seeing y'all. We'll see y'all soon. <laughs> Watch out for those darn snakes. Oh, nice. Kind of a two-man job with the Yeti coolers. Todd, you're doing this the hard way. Oh yeah. Just oh, open, yeah. The whole, open the whole thing and dump it in. <laughs> Perfect. Work? Yep. That'll work. Are these different editions, or did you do modifications, or what's going on with these? These are the brand new Jace Robertson Signature Edition. They're dipped in the Garrett camo. Oh mm -hmm. wow, that's cool. And they actually also come with something pretty cool. The duck command. Oh, nice. <laughs> so that is cool. We can use that today. Maybe we can do some yeah. duck hunting. <laughs> well, what's cool about this is, I don't know if y'all have ever watched any of my videos, like if I find silver or uh -huh. something really cool, I've got this kazoo. I know it's a little <laughs> But if we find something really amazing, you can duck call, let the team know mm. that we found something. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. an awesome idea. Like so it. it's a really cool idea. Yeah. I like that camo on there. Yeah, oh, it's different. Really as soon as I looked at it, I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? These are different. Do you mind if I take a minute to talk about the story and talk a little yeah, bit about safety? Yeah, why don't we get everybody on the same page? We love what we do. And we all get out there and we get really excited. You know, that chance of finding that mother load and that chance of finding that discovery. If something happened to you, Sean, Todd, Chooch, Gypsy. I guarantee you this team isn't just going to go, oh, let's, let's uh, get them in a car and get them to the hospital. This team is tight niche, and I know it's going to affect us for the whole weekend. If yeah, you're everybody's not gonna... got their specific role to play. If somebody right. goes down, it's going to affect the whole trip. I have never seen so many snakes right. at one time of where we're going now. Every time I go out, I see a rattlesnake in this section. And that, to me, is more than most places I go to. Right. A lot of places it's starting I go to visit. warm up just enough that they're starting to come out. They right. want to sun themselves on the rocks. So right. it's important that you know everybody keeps their eyes peeled. Gypsy's got some nice thick boots. Yeah, Todd's uh, got his little snake biters on. So I think, uh, yeah, I think we're set. Be real careful reaching around in things, and when you're climbing and where you put your hands, that's. Yeah. Or usually where they're hiding. Protect so. yourself, protect each other because right. it will, I guarantee you, if you ended up in the hospital, the, we're going to have to stop production, we're going to stop treasure hunting, and that episode's done and over with, I guarantee you. This site I have not been on for years, and I have really not been able to research this the way I wanted to. This site has some very promising things that I found, 
and then I had to drop it. And I didn't have a team like we are today when I found the site several years ago. So that's why I'm excited about taking you guys out to the site, showing you what I know, telling you the story, and then seeing what this team can uncover from there. Little bad boy. Why don't you give us a little backstory to this site and why it's so interesting? Oh man, I was hoping to keep you guys a little bit in suspense here, but no, you're right. It's time to explain. So in 2012, someone approached me with a story. I think it was his grandfather who actually found a natural cave full of artifacts and inside his grandfather was claiming that there were swords, there were tablets, you know, there were goblets. He ended up having a Polaroid camera with him at the time and he took a picture of it. It was dark, it was hazy, it was really hard. They really make out what it was because he was in that cave. But even looking at that picture, that's when I saw it and I thought to myself, wow, this really could be something. He was very afraid of the government. From what I heard, he spent the last couple of years with only telling his sons about the story. They came out a couple more times, but they were afraid to even step foot on this area because they were afraid of getting attention from the government. That's all I know. That's their story. That's not how we do things, but that's how they did it. He ended up dying shortly after that. And all, and the story has just been passed down throughout the family for the last two or three generations. There is supposed to be a story that possibly the Aztec treasure is not in Kanab, Utah, like everybody thinks. That, that the Aztec treasure could possibly be in this area on the lower foothills of Pine Valley. What if it's a different culture? I mean, you have Aztecs, you have Incas, you have Toltec, you have all these different cultures. Well, that... we're not too far from the Spanish Trail. I mean, right. isn't the old Spanish Trail it's, like... It's uh, just right there. Yeah, a few miles away. Yeah, how far, Todd? I mean, we're yeah. actually, yeah, you're right. Well, how, how does that keep happening? We keep ending up just a couple miles away from the old Spanish trail. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of stories, too, about how the Native Americans would uh, come across the Spaniards, and they had no need for their gold, their silver, and all the, you know, mm -hmm. stuff. They, they saw it as uh, the white man's greed, the right. source of, you know, all their trouble. They, what they would do is they would, you know, they would attack the Spanish, take all this stuff that they thought would attract, you know, bad attention, and then just squirrel it away somewhere. There's also some... Uh, stories of the KGC out here too mm. so Good there's, point. there's lots of lots of stories out here weren't you also with someone that had a long range detector yeah that was Steve before we even came to the site I had two different people with two different types of long range metal detectors that both instruments pointed to the same area this is a very good reason why we're out here and why we want to get more into this so on the software it did tell us that we were only a mile away and it pointed to the hilltop wow. it pointed exactly to the hilltop i got goosebumps so how about you Jesse? <laughs> yes we did find some petroglyphs these are not your traditional native american petroglyphs and mm -hmm. that's where we're going to head to right now i've got a question for you yeah so have you looked at any aerial maps or anything of that nature that maybe where you see some old trails or yes. anything like that? Great question, Gypsies. On the back side of where we found these petroglyphs, on Google Earth, it does show a very weird straight line. Nature does not make straight lines and circles, right guys? Right. We know that. The back side of that hill, I can see on Google Earth, straight line like that, and another one that goes like that and the interesting thing is the main road is runs parallel right there there is nothing that shows that heavy equipment made that trail or that road wow. there yeah, didn't you no... say it looked like a real old trail yeah. too but gypsy and todd when you guys get back in there i would love to get the metal detectors in that area and if we only find cans from the 1960s that tells us that if we find several of them right. they were back there working they were back there doing For a something reason. right yeah. For a reason. Me and Rattlers aren't friends. Yeah, he doesn't sound too friendly, does no. he? No. Starting to coil up a little bit more. Watch it because they, oh, they can get back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's pissed. Yeah, he's not liking it. Let's do this. I'm ready. Everybody take water and watch out for snakes. My spidey sense is a tingling. So Me too. Really cow, look at that. Did you find it? 
That's it, right? Yeah, we got it. That's fantastic. You actually took a photo of this and sent it to a specialist, right? Yeah. What did, did. Uh, what did he have to say? Like, what are the significance behind these carvings? The interesting thing is after we found this, we took a really big tour around this whole ledge to see if we can find more. This was the only one that we found. When you come across uh, a carving, it's like a panel, you know? Yeah. They're telling multiple different stories on that uh, panel. But this is very isolated, seems very specific. That's not the traditional symbols that I'm used to seeing right. from the Paiutes or anything right. like it's that. Right, it's very unique. Yeah, it looks very different. So when we found this, uh, Steve at the time had a colleague that he's used and worked with several times on other sites. And we, when we sent it off to him, he was confident he knew what they meant. And he sent us back the photo we gave him with like a brief description of description, what everything thank meant. You. Yeah, with the description of what they meant. So let me pull that up real quick. Right here, see where this one starts? Uh -huh. It actually starts right here and it comes back around. And according to the specialist, what that means is go to the top of or or go to the top and look around. And then these other O's right here, he's saying that's saying look at or go to. So now we have go to the top of and look around. Now, when it comes to this one, what's really unique is that's natural. They didn't, they didn't make that right. hole in there. He firmly believes that that means cave opening wow. or mine opening wow. or shaft. This is where I really need your guys' help, all you guys, because this is as far as I've gotten. It's too much of coincidence. Two long range detectors tell us to come here. Both of them are hitting really hard, big gold, silver, and iron, which sounds like what the story said, you know? Right. right. I'm curious, any idea of what this may mean? It almost looks like a cavern or a deep crevice, maybe right. some you valley. Know, the only thing that he- Ravine. Ravine. This is the top of where we're at. These, this could be a peak valley and mm. then a peak mm -hmm. and then the cave yeah 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 Possible. that could be we should have gypsy and todd uh metal detect around here see if they can find any clues of, of any time period yeah, something or dating us back to that time period yeah like you said gypsy even someone who might have been searching for it earlier right, earlier and right now i'm using the garrett ace apex i'm hunting in zero discrimination mode i'm listening for just anything any type of signal to carve something into lava would take some time it took some time yeah and why would why would they take the time to carve something into such a hard material like that unless it was of some significant right. importance i i think there's something here i mean the just the fact that they're here it's kind of a way there isn't uh away from things there isn't water there may be some shelters up here we may find something just to find them all by themselves i think that's really telling Chooch, what are you hoping to find? Everything. Wow, what's a big list, dude? Everything? <laughs> I, want, I want to find a skeleton of some sort, you know? <laughs> that would actually be some, cool. Yeah, like you were saying, some of the swords or shields, that'd be cool to find. Dude, that would be cool. So I find these petroglyphs very intriguing. Uh, there's, I'm sure, so many different opinions on how old they are, what type of petroglyphs they are. I have kind of my own ideas and if what we're searching for, if that could be that cave opening, if they did hide something in there, could this mean and lead us to that? If we can take these clues and explore some more and see where it leads and who knows what we might find. Sometimes even finding nothing really tells you that this could be a really old ancient area if not many people know about this, we're not finding more modern things. Um, you know, that means if there is a treasure there, it could still be there. I say let's continue this search and see where it leads us. So far, just pieces of wire. It goes back a ways, but it's uh, pretty narrow. Sean's uh, Whoa, look at that. You can't say look at that when you don't even have a GoPro on your head. I know, you want right? this GoPro? We saw a little opening about maybe 12 feet that way. And it looks like it connects to what I'm looking at right here. Tim, go stick your head in that other hole. <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, that gives me an idea. <laughs> what do you think about me handing the detector oh, down to you? Me? Yeah, Holy oh, shit. Sean's voice is going right through that. Really? That, yeah. Sean, can you hear me? Yeah. It sounds like you're going right through. That's crazy. That tells me we have cavities all over this ridge. You know, all over these lava rocks, which is exactly what we're looking for. This is what we do, process of elimination. All we can do is just hunt around and see what we can find. Oh, we got a hot rock. Hot rock? Yep. That's okay. Let's break out this map real quick right, on yeah, this let's hood. Let's see what we can see. What's that? Oh, I remember doing this. Okay, so this is where our petroglyphs are, where we just came from. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to show you, this is in black and white. This is the road behind us right mm -hmm. see these straight lines right here wow. look at that yes. see look at how straight that is that is perfectly straight that is man-made there's no way no way there's no way even even man-made roads modern. look at this yes. yeah it's curvy, it's curvy. Be, but this for that look at that yeah, like gypsy was saying even the the roads and the trails follow you know follow the trail follow the landscape that is very deliberate. There's another line that goes straight to it from this long line here. Oh, and that's a good point. Look at this. So there's a road. There is nothing. There is no road. There is nothing yeah, no that's trail, connecting, like, it. connecting it. That is so what interesting. is that? And then the wash. That was the wash that we were looking at. Mm. Maybe mm -hmm. there might be an opening down mm -hmm. in there. Because if you look, if you angle that... Uh, those drawings, it seems like they are kind of pointing to this area right there. Why something's calling calling out to me on top of this ridge line because that's much higher in elevation. If someone was gonna put another clue up there, I would think it would be at the high point. So whole crew goes idea. to this site and we we all use our abilities and stuff to unlock this mystery. Is that wire? Yep. I figured I would break out my uh, field scope and just kind of scout the area of the ridge lines and hilltops around me. Hey Todd, did you find anything yet? Yeah, I got a horseshoe. I'm not quite sure on the age, but it's been beat up and... I noticed that you guys found out that the straight lines that we were showing on the map prior was old fencing. The type of uh, vertical posts that they're using reminds me of 70s 80s type period yeah, yeah I think it's probably probably 70s early 80s maybe right away I broke out my GPS on our GPS um, some of the older GPS's don't do it but on this one it tells me color boundary when I was looking at it I almost figured that must be a border of like BLM and private mm -hmm. or BLM and Forest Service. It wasn't. The BLM still goes down to the middle of this valley over here. So it's BLM land on both sides of the fence. So it's not distinguishing property boundaries. And then what was interesting is I took the drone and I followed it to the end of one side of the fence, took it to the end of the other side of the fence. Both of them stop in like an outcropping like this, which tells me it's not trying to keep something in. It makes me think that they're trying to keep something out. Maybe they're keeping out the cattle. But if you take the drone and go that way, just even 100 feet away from that fence, they can still get up. So it's almost like they're just keeping them out of just this area. I don't know if it's protected. I don't know if there's turtles back here that they're trying to keep traffic from. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's almost just like, nope, don't come into this area yeah. that we just did. We covered a lot of ground. I think it's good to to call it yeah. good for the day and start fresh again. Finding those petroglyphs was huge. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll we'll find some more stuff tomorrow and we'll just Yeah, we'll get out there, cover more ground, get mm -hmm. some fresh eyes on things. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of ground out there to cover, a lot of yeah. a lot of holes in those it's rocks. Like a and, lot of yeah, this. A lot the of terrain is really of, yeah. like rough too you know it's not like we're just going on across the flat trail but no. something i was thinking about while we were out there just trying to stay hydrated you know put yourself back in whoever made mm -hmm. those those petroglyphs on there how far did they go uh you know how far did they yep. travel there had to have been a, a large amount of water somewhere close by that's a great point. Why go through that if they're not hiding anything important? Why? 
Well, and the other thing that I was thinking is, you know, going back to the material, you know, like we've, we've always seen petroglyphs on sandstone. It's easy mm -hmm. to carve in sandstone. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really recall how often I've seen something carved into lava rock like yeah. that. That would take, oh. you know, a lot of effort. So yeah. they must have gone through that effort Maybe for a reason. Even, oh, here's a good theory. Well, that's true, what you're saying, which sounds about right. I don't remember how many petroglyphs I've seen on a lot of rock. That makes me think that someone with a different technology, different method, came from somewhere else and came here. Right. It's, it's something yeah. to think about. No. I was prepared to dig a lot of bullet casings. You know, I have never been into an area where scattered where I don't find at least some bullet casings or shotgun shells. Mm -hmm. It makes sense that the hunters and that's those high peaks that you would go up there and, and do some hunting, but none of that. that is, yeah, that, that whole area strange. just felt untouched, you know, completely yeah. secluded and untouched. And, and there wasn't there wasn't a lot of game trails. I mean we found I a noticed couple that too. of little a little ones that were like, yeah, I think this looks like a little trail, but there was no game trails up right. in there, but there was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, deer droppings, a lot of other animals. Mm -hmm. but and you can tell when we were up at that fence edge where they pushed the rocks to the side to put those fence posts in. Put that fence there, yeah. So I think it's safe to say from what we've found today, the only evidence of people really hanging out out there were the BLM building that fence. Building yeah. that fence and the people who left the petroglyphs. Right. There's that one weird horseshoe. Mm. Now good that point. is very interesting. That is a good point. And it was, it was way up there in the, in the rocks. It wasn't down by the road or, you know, it was... That, the that story I mean, that's kind of in line with him. You know, he, he found that opening while he was up riding his horse. That does get his land, so. so. And even that fence kind of felt like 1970s, 1980s to mm -hmm. me. So yeah. it is kind of weird that we're not trying to put this puzzle together that doesn't fit. We're just, we're just relaying and seeing what we're, we're seeing. picking up, you mm -hmm. know, and it is kind of a weird coincidence. Right. All right, guys. Can cool. we go home and get some rest? Yeah, let's go rest up, up so we can hit hard and hard. That sounds like good. A few of us brought up uh, splitting up. I would like to take Todd and take Chooch with us. And me and Todd, see this, this uh, ridge line right here? I really want to follow that. The petroglyphs were found on top of the ridge line. This is unexplored for us. You've been kind of sensing this little this canyon over there, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, that ravine right there. I think that might be a good spot to check out. Okay. Something about it, I don't know. Something about it's just calling to me. Yeah, I would say if, if you're feeling it, then go for it. Gypsy, you feel okay going with Sean sure. and Antonio? Antonio, are you okay with running the GoPro and, and uh getting these two as they're exploring and yeah, yeah. covering that adventure. And then we'll keep our radios on us. And if you guys find something, let us know. Okay. Yeah. If we find something, we'll let Likewise. you guys know. Let's do it. Okay. All right. If anybody's gonna get bit by a snake right now, it's a good time. You can go up there and metal detect under it. There's this massive rattlesnake waiting in there. Get some wire down there and a uh, 22 casing. That's about it. What do you think, Todd? Well, let's uh, let's get some measurements. Okay. Get some uh, GPS on it. I haven't been back here for almost 10 years, but this one right here used to have uh, a rock. That was very odd. It's it's almost like someone you could see on the side. It was almost like an octagon shape. Before you guys, I did have another treasure hunting team, and that team kind of did go our separate ways. I'm thinking someone has been out here since then and has been tampering with it. Oh, you can see where it's it's worn or rubbed or chiseled around this. Yeah. Uh huh. And with a triangle, triangles, I mean, the kind of triangles we're looking for can mean a couple different things, you yeah. know, like direction, um, it could be giving us a distance. It's 20 degrees. I'm just getting the direction that these are lined up. 
then we can map that out and see if there's anything that they're pointing to. Oh. Chooch, I think your contract says that if someone falls, you got to fall with them so you can get it on yeah, camera. Yeah, you got to get it on camera. Gotcha. <laughs> we'll document that, and then we can go throw it on the computer. And okay. Anything that makes you feel like it could be where our other team is, right down in this ravine or canyon? No, there's not really. Okay. I mean, it's down here, down there, or over there. One thing that I noticed when I got home is that I, I looked at the original picture of the triangle, what I called it, um, that was taken in 2013. And then we compared it to the videos of today. And even the difference between, you know, the 780 and the 4K changed my perspective on it. And I happened to notice that it appeared that there was a circle within the triangle, which changes everything about what we're doing. If I was to go back there today, I would look at it differently and I'd probably go in a different direction than what we did when we were there. Point, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You can see where we were earlier. Mm -hmm. That hill looks much different from this angle. Doesn't it? Looking at it now, Tim, when you, when you were talking about the petroglyphs being in pairs, you know, that's what I'm kind of looking at is that might be the first pair of peaks right mm -hmm. there. Then there's the other one, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, one, two. We got, yeah. Where's the oh, third? The two, is or, it where's over the there fourth then? one? Todd, do we have any clue of maybe the distance? I mean, at this point, I, it could be 50 I didn't feet. See, or... Yeah, I didn't see anything that indicated uh, distance. Let's get some optics out on that peak right there and see what we can see. That's a see. good idea. Even up there, who knows? There might be a, a big old rock monument that we're missing, or maybe on right. this one. Usually, your rock monuments are either along on a trail, which I haven't seen any on the trail here, mm -hmm. or they're going to put them on top of these mountain panels right there. Well, that well, are real and there's easy a whole bunch you. down in there too. So mm -hmm. either one of those, but but then we can say, let's let's compare these and see if these are similar. Maybe we can get a an idea what this is yeah. about. If we do end up matching those symbols with something like this, then that might tell us all it is is Paiute Indian petroglyphs. But if we're not finding anything that matches this panel that you're taking us to, that makes me want to lean towards, you know, a different culture, someone before them. So. Get a little context and see, maybe we can find something that'll help us out, get us a little farther yeah. down the road. Yeah, this is a really interesting panel, Todd. You can see there's like several generations yeah, there's, there's of uh, layers and layers. So what, what can you tell us about this? Well, I'm not seeing any uh, anything that's really similar to, to what we saw up there. Right. These feel different, Todd. You know, yeah, these to me, it feels more like them praising life in a way. We just got to this panel. I am recognizing some of the common symbols used in this area by you know, the same uh, Paiute Indians. Mm -hmm. For the area, these are these are pretty typical. Yeah, they fit uh, They fit the, the culture yeah. of the, the region of some of the other panels that we've seen in this area. And I think that's what really kind of stood out when we saw those ones up there. They were, they, they didn't look like yeah. anything yeah. that we've seen before. Well, look at this. So we come this area and you compare them to what we found up there. This seems foreign almost compared yeah, to these. Yeah, it's really, it's really bizarre. And, and maybe, maybe that is a... Uh, you know, unique to that spot. It, it could be the same people, but it, it just isn't, we don't see that here. So it's it's gotta be something that's unique to that. Mm -hmm. It does feel like whatever's going on up there, gravesite, treasure cave, whatever it is, some those symbols are unique for that occasion. So that's another indication of something that at this point, we're not sure what to make of that. You know, why are those four symbols just sitting there in the middle of nowhere, not next to water, not next to anything that we know of where the Indians uh, had a, even a camp or anything. We're familiar with some of these, mm -hmm. but we're not familiar with those up there. I think that's what's neat with the layering that we're seeing with these petroglyphs. A lot of them look older than others. I mean, it could have been different people even passing through, yeah, right. but it may have only lived here for a short time, leaving their mark. Well, the story itself sounds intriguing to me. The mystery and the intrigue that keeps all of us treasure hunters going and, and learning as we go with taking bits of pieces of the history in the area 
and our surroundings and what we learn along the way. We have so many different thoughts that cross our mind. You know, your first thought is how old is this? Uh, who put this there? Why did they put this there? It, sometimes you come away with more question than, questions than answers. Sean, we're in the middle of an interview. And Antonio saw it logs. He's literally sleeping on that rock. Jepsy was right over there. We were interviewing her. And he's over here snoring. He sleeps through everything. In the tree, on the rock, in the car. Oh, good job, Jim. Wake up, Sleepy Beauty. You fell asleep during the interview. <laughs> Out of the contract. <laughs> I guess, I guess there you that's go. what it is. <laughs> So mainly you found a lot of modern bullet casings and bullets this time. You know, uh, we were hoping for something a little more, but you never know what you're gonna find. Uh, it would have been nice to find something, you know, really old and something pertaining to no. what we were looking for. What? 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 Hey, the people down here feel who is that? Sean? Hey. How's it hanging, guys? <laughs> what did you do, get bored? Why'd you drop in? Right. <laughs> so, Tim, I think that we really got what we needed to get today. I think we, you know, we looked at a couple different panels. We compared what we saw, you know, what you would typically see from, from the natives in the area. And that just up there, I think that answers a lot of questions for us. That It just does not look like what you would normally see. And what those panels that we saw today tell me is that these local Native Americans were more interested in the simple life and just the way that I would picture, you know, mm -hmm. food source, family, generations, you know, land, water, things like that. And so I, I think we did a pretty good job with saying, hey, those petroglyphs that were on the treasure site, those are... They're I'm, too specific. Yeah, I think they're so too, too. They're too random, they're too isolated. And like Gypsy was saying, you know, not finding artifacts and not finding much is a clue in and of itself yeah there wasn't much traffic up there so yeah i think uh i think it was a good trip i think we you know we ruled out some uh some areas and i think we'll just have to uh chop this up as uh you know hitting it another time we're gonna leave that in the hands of our audience now if anybody knows more of that story maybe someone lives locally there maybe yeah. they know more they can reach, reach out, out to, us. to us and let us know and we'll go from there we're not going home empty-handed no no we, you we, always we, you always learn something when you go out and i think uh, i think we learned a lot from this trip so yeah hey gypsy we want to thank you for coming out it has thank been you. a pleasure having you out here um it was it was fun to spend more time get to know you even better out in the field i've always said you want to get to know someone Take them outdoors for right. a few days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Them up a mountain or two. Yeah, yeah. So we may have not have found the treasure this time, but by doing this trip, we gained new knowledge, we discovered new things, and now we can come back to this area and try again. Next time on Uncharted Expedition. And so this spot's gonna be relatively unexplored for the most part, huh? That's what they're telling me. Wow. Well, what do you think, Todd, since we're here? Turn your light on. I see dead people. Tomorrow we're gonna to see a whole lot more than what we did today. One, you could tell that they were really pulling a lot of ore out of. Having fun exploring and seeing what we can find.